Founded in 1861 in Genoa, RINA is one of the world's oldest classification societies. Its job is basically to inspect, test and certify engineering solutions across a wide range of industries, but the marine sector has always been a cornerstone of its activities, leveraging its experience and expertise to come up with innovative solutions to sometimes complex problems. Over the years, RENA has been able to expand its portfolio of services and latterly with special focus on sustainability. And joining us today in the Boat Show studio is Fiorenzo Spardoni, who is Senior Director of RENA's Marine North Europe region. And he's going to tell us something about what RENA is up to in the Supio sector. Welcome, Fiorenzo. Thank you, Justin, and uh, thanks for having me here today to speak with you. I, I'm sure you recall that both during and immediately after the COVID pandemic, we saw an explosion of sales of large yachts. The market has since stabilized or normalized, but it's still very busy. How has this boom in production affected your work at RENA? Yes, well, uh, let me say that RENA always invested a lot in uh, this sector, even when the market was not booming. And uh, there, is a, there is a reason for that. Uh, despite it is a, a niche market, it is a testament to excellence and uh, it is a trademark of RENA. Of course, also this focus uh, is uh, fostered by the fact that we are very strong in the cruise uh, sector where uh, the, the attention to uh, aesthetical aspect and, uh, uh, and the details is very important uh, as well as in the yachting industry. So this uh, uh, had an effect of uh, uh, exponential growth actually and uh, we did uh, even better than the mar market trend and today uh, the RINA fleet is counting 1,300 yachts that uh, is pretty impressive if you think that is a 40% increase from 2018. Uh, if I have to summarize uh, why we are doing even better uh, of the market trend is, the, is that uh, we, we were ready and we are ready to absorb the extra demand so we are very well structured but also we anticipated uh, the, the demands, uh, the requests of, of, of the industry. And uh, this has been possible through the launch of our new uh, super yacht brand, Rina Maxima, in 2022. I'm glad you brought up uh, Rina Maxima because that's an initiative I'd like you to tell us more about. I know it deals with things like noise and vibration on yachts, but what else? Yeah, uh, Rina Maxima is a new brand dedicated to uh, custom large yacht. Uh, the purpose is to be leader in supporting the design, the building and the management of, of large yachts. So I like to uh, define it as an end-to-end partnership proposal. So it's not only about certification, but it's much more. Actually, the certification process is in the framework of Rina Maxima and we have a very advanced uh, uh, solution for this, uh, like 3D approvals uh, and, other, and other solutions, but uh, the focus is uh, uh, on uh, also consulting uh, aspect. Uh, you mentioned uh, noise and vibration, it is a very, very good example because we are always improving on this, uh, on this topic. Uh, we are uh, increasing our capabilities of assessing the, the measuring the noise on board and also predicting it. Just for an example, uh, in the measurement side, we are using state-of-the-art uh, equipment like uh, noise and vibration cameras, so you can see the noise and the vibration to assess it uh, more quickly and more precisely. Uh, so Justin, if I have to summarize the, the main drivers of uh, RINA Maxima, for sure, I have to mention digitalization and decarbonization that are actually the strategic stream, not only of yachting or marine, but of the whole, inter uh, whole RINA group. You mentioned uh, decarbonisation. RENA recently signed an agreement with the Italian energy provider ENI to speed up the energy uh, transition. What might that agreement mean for the yachting industry? Uh, well, it is uh, very interesting. We have uh, um, uh, established this uh, partnership with ENI to uh, develop and uh, um, increase the use of uh, uh, alternative fuels, especially biofuels in this case. Uh, and we really think that is the drop-in solution for, for the yachting industry and, and not only. Uh, the use of biofuel, especially HVO, so hydro-treated vegetable oils, uh, can reduce till 90% uh, of the, the emission of CO2. Uh, and these uh, Mm, using, I mean, not, not making any big, uh, big uh, modification to the to the engine room, 
uh, many manufacturing ranges are approving the, the use of uh, HVO. Uh, and the results of this collaboration uh, was that uh, RINA certified for the first time uh, the uh, HVO produced by ENI uh, according to RED2 uh, European standard. And the second one is uh, connected with one of our, our major clients, Azimut. Uh, as you know, uh, they have this collaboration with ENI uh, and is uh, providing more than 700,000 a liter of HVO for the sea trial of, of Azimut uh, uh, fleet uh, every year. Uh, and the RINA is uh, um, in the process of certifying uh, with an additional notation uh, the, the yachts that are using biofuel with the biofuel uh, notation. So we are of course uh, assessing that uh, all the equipment can run under uh, HVO and that we are doing also uh, dedicated sea trial for this. Continuing our discussion about uh, sustainability and especially renewable fuels or alternative fuels, um, at last year's Monaco Yacht Show, uh, RINA awarded the Freddy Group, or more particularly CRN, formal recognition of its uh, sustainable powered yacht project. Not a very convenient name, but it's based on fuel cell technology. So what I'd like to know is what kind of classification challenges are presented by these alternative fuels, be it methanol or hydrogen or indeed ammonia? Of course, uh, let me say that uh, this project uh, uh, is fitted perfectly in the framework of uh, RINA Maxima. This is a perfect example when we say uh, uh, the, the one of the pillars of RINA Maxima is decarbonization. In this case, uh, RINA teamed up with the shipyard and the manufacturer of the special equipment to support the design, the feasibility study and the risk assessment on the use of alternative fuel like in this case methanol. The platform in subject is using fuel cell to power hotel load or also uh, the propulsion for uh, a, a small amount of time. We, if we talk about uh, hotel load also of days of, of use, uh, of course the, the idea is to store uh, methanol on board and not hydrogen and then through a reformer uh, uh, transform it into hydrogen and then uh, uh, feed the, the fuel cell. And we really think that this is the architecture more promising for, for, for the sector actually, uh, together of course with the, with the use of biofuel, uh, because uh, you avoid the, all the challenges to, to transport and store uh, hydrogen uh, on board. So we really think that methanol for yachting is, uh, is uh, the, the way to go. So from what you're saying, it seems that for the time being, at least on yachts, we're looking at hybrid systems that combine um, diesel with perhaps HVO and batteries and possibly um, hydrogen derived from reformed methanol. But the big question is, when do you think we'll see a large yacht with a fuel cell as the main source of propulsion? A difficult question because uh, no one has the silver bullet, you know. Uh, and uh, it's difficult to predict the future. Uh, but I, I'm pretty sure that uh, uh, regarding the hotel load, uh, we, we could see uh, in, in few years uh, uh, the use of uh, methanol reform to hydrogen and the use of fuel cell more and more on board. Uh, but we need a mix, of course, of solution. Uh, uh, and uh, and uh, most probably we, we, need, we also need to uh, carbon capture the, the emission, uh, otherwise we will never be able to uh, reach the net zero target. So this is, uh, this is our view, but of course uh, step by step uh, and uh, teaming up with the industry, we, we are uh, confident that we can reach the target. Fiorenzo, thank you very much for your insights. Thank you, Justin.